All right, hey everybody. Uh, I just want to do a very, very quick video here, just talking about a really cool feature in the most up-to-date experimental firmware for the RetroTINK 4K. This is really good for somebody who might want to use the Mr. FPGA or the DV1 via HDMI um, and have some CRT effects and get those CRT effects as consistent across cores as possible. So what I'm going to do is open up a core here and we're going to start off with, let's start with the NES core. So we have Dr. Mario here. By default in the RetroThink 4K settings, you will have auto decimation enabled. So what that means is the image that's sent over HDMI is padded to make it HDMI compliant or something like that. I'm not super clued up on this, but it also contains some information so that the retro tink can reverse the processing that's done on that image and bring it back to its native pixels. Then you can do all your scaling and everything on top of it. That's great if you like sharp pixels like this that we have here. Uh, this is running at 1080p, by the way. However, if you want to start adding some CRT effects, you might run into some issues using auto decimation. Uh, so we now have this target decimate feature that we'll get into in a little bit. So let's put some CRT effects on this. So we will start with, I mean, I always recommend as a start, Gaussian, Gaussian, I don't know how to pronounce it. A five and a 10 is always a good place to start for me personally. I'm not gonna add any masks and I'm not gonna add any horizontal blur. I just want you to kind of see the effects that we have here. So horizontal kernel is where we can adjust how soft the image is scaled horizontally or interpolated horizontally. So we have bilinear sharp, bilinear medium, bilinear standard, bilinear soft. And then we've got cubic and lanchos, lanks, like, yep, yeah, that one. What I want to do is I'm going to leave this on bilinear soft at the moment. And I want you to really pay attention to how soft this image is right now. So you might like this. This might be how you remember playing games if your CRT TV back in the day was particularly horrendous. So you like this effect, you like the softness, and then you go, hey, right, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna load up my Super Nintendo core. And you might wanna play your favorite game of all time with that same level of softness. It might not be easy to see, but this is a little bit sharper than the NES core. And in this case, this is because the Super NES core has a 512 pixel wide processing activated by default. So there's a couple of ways around this. Um, you can go into the menu and turn off, also turn on force 256 pixels. Then, oh, that's, that's the same level of softness that you want. So now this is on par with the NES core, which is, <laughs> if you like that, this is fine. Um, however, say if you want to play Secret of Mana 3, Seiken Densetsu 3, whatever it is, you might run into some issues. You might not be able to see this, but the game is rendered at 512 pixels wide, but we can't see that. So we would have to go into audio and video and turn that feature off so we can then see all of this text here. So now you have an issue where you've got two cores here that are reacting differently to the same interpolation method. This is where your target decimation is going to come in handy. So let's go into HDMI receiver and we can turn target decimate on. So if we set it to 720, you'll notice that the input pixels don't change. They remain at 512 because what the target decimate is going to do is have a target width, which is 720 in this case, and it's gonna multiply the input pixels until it gets as close to that as possible. However, if we change this to 1024, you're gonna get a lot closer. Um, if I change it to 1280, it's gonna adjust again, and it's gonna be as close as it can get. What I would recommend doing is experimenting with these numbers. I could personally recommend either 720 or 1024. Now it's not gonna be as blurry, but you're gonna have a lot more consistency across your cores. So if we now go back to the NES core, you can see that we kind of have the same level of softness and that's because 
or it's been multiplied to 1024. So what I'm going to do is change cars around and I want you to keep an eye on the input pixels and how it tries to maintain as close a value to 1024 as possible. So let's jump into the Mega Drive car. And I'm going to load Castlevania because this actually changes internal resolution or its internal width quite a bit. So right now it's AM infant. Well, okay. 1024. Now it's 960. Back to 1024 again. Nine sixty, and this is its three twenty pixel wide mode. Now we're back in the two hundred fifty six pixel wide mode. Then back to nine sixty, and it'll remain this because most of the game is at this resolution. And this is going to allow you to have a similar level of softness across all of the cores. Now, if you wanted to knock this down to 720 to make things a bit softer, but this is almost, you could think of this as a softness slider. And then you can adjust your actual interpolation settings to taste. I personally found that Cubic does a pretty good job. So then I, I think like 720 is quite a good in between if you want a little bit of softness. If you have a RetroTINK 4K, then you can start adding all of your extra stuff, like the horizontal blur, which when you jack this up to somewhere between four and six, you'll get much more of that CRT likeness, like likeosity. If you want, you can add your masks. Now bear in mind, this is running at 1080p, so it's gonna look like shit with a mask on, but we'll, we'll still enable uh, a mono mask is always a good choice. We'll knock this down to what? Five. But you'll get a similar level of <laughs> the same CRT effect. Ignore my terrible plane here. I don't know why I keep trying to jump over these arseholes. So for example, let's jump into a different car now. A Super NES might be ever so slightly softer because it's still running in uh, 512. So it's not going to stretch the image quite as much, but you'll see that we retain that resolution. See, and I would say visually once you, when you sat back a little bit, it's going to look about the same. If we go to the NES car, yeah, it's a similar level of softness there. So I would highly recommend experimenting with the target decimate feature. You might find it an awful lot of fun. Especially if you want to get some consistency across your cars. Alternatively, you don't have to use it at all, but it's a cool little feature and I found myself using it quite a bit when using CRT, effect, CRT effects for my own personal pleasure. But anyway, that's about enough of that today. Enjoy playing with your RetroTINK 4K and your mister. Till next time, take care and goodbye. Let's whip these ghouls.